Around May, I found out that CD Projekt Red had changed the rules around the Gwent journey, so the journeys were no longer time-bound. This meant I no longer felt pressure to play every day in order to progress. Freed from feeling forced to play, I once again caught the Gwent bug, and as you can see, it became my most played game. The addiction was also facilitated by playing on my phone, although that time is not captured here. Eventually, around September, I had to stop when the heft of the phone was giving me RSI issues. I'd moved on to other games on my PC, so I took a break from Gwent. The developers announced the game only has one more update coming, so we'll see if the community around the game remains. That'll dictate how much I continue to play Gwent, because after all, multiplayer games are no fun if there isn't anyone around to play with. I expect I'll get re-addicted sometime in 2023. This is the deck building roguelike game that Dan recommended to me last year. I couldn't remember the name and so I ended up accidentally buying and playing Dicey Dungeons and Slay the Spire instead. I found Monster Train to be much more addicted than Slay the Spire because the use of a primary and secondary clan type meant the card diversity was much higher. It also meant there were many different combinations of primary and secondary clans, especially since switching which was primary and which was secondary changes your hero character. Having multiple platforms on the train to juggle also made things more exciting when compared to Slay the Spire. While there was still the randomness of a deck builder, it felt less random than Dicey Dungeons. But what made it work better for me as a roguelike compared to Slay the Spire is that after every battle, there was some kind of store to shop at and some bonuses to get. It kept things a lot fresher than in Slay the Spire where you might go three or four or more encounters before hitting up the shops. I honestly don't remember playing this much Core Keeper because I never played on my own. I was only playing together with the kids to help them build up their base and get ready to attack the larger enemies. If the kids hadn't abandoned Core Keeper for Minecraft, this game may have ended up higher up at the number 2 spot. I do like that it's kind of an inverse Stardew Valley. The mining and crafting take the lead spot, but there's still farming of crops and even some kinds of animals. I've always intended to go back to this game. Of all the Stardew Valley clones, and there are almost literally hundreds at this point, this one seems to give the genre the most unique spin. Spelunky 2 landed back on the list mostly due to the kids asking to play with me. We continue to have a blast, especially as the kids continue to get older and better at strategy. I also had a lot of fun on Extra Life Day when some strangers saw the live stream and joined me in the game. And the kids had a lot of fun destroying their uncle in arena mode. I think, I feel like I'm mostly done with Spelunky 2, having beat the game once or twice with Dan in the previous year. Time will tell. It would definitely be a strange year if a game in the Civilization franchise didn't make an appearance on my end of the year gaming list. This year, I only played the multiplayer games I have ongoing with my siblings. There was a chunk of time where I was really making a big effort to get to my turns, but then I got sidetracked by other games. As long-time readers of my blog or watchers of my videos know, I'm a big fan of dad jokes and puzzles. And this sequel to Puzzle Agent scratched both those itches. The game has the player return to the same seat as the first game, where folks seem to have a strange reaction to see the player's character return. If you enjoyed the first game, I think you'll definitely enjoy this one as well. I started off with my character acting almost as a parody of a hitman while playing the game. I had a lot of fun with it and I enjoyed myself, but it was definitely a mockery of the idea that I was supposed to be a hitman. I did get better as I spent more time with the game, but I still felt like I was making too many mistakes. The AI engine the developers have come up with 
and the multiple win conditions do make the game a joy to play, and I hope to find time to finish it in 2023. A huge chunk of my time playing Dicey Dungeons this year was spent trying to catch up with my wife. She beat the whole game this year in a concentrated month of effort. Frustratingly, I was unable to match her. I definitely want to try and beat the game, so I will probably be putting a bit more time into the game in 2023. I gave this one player version of Gwent a look when it first came out. It's almost as much fun as Gwent. I think the biggest obstacle to having as much fun as Gwent is the fact that you're just playing against the computer. Because I'm only mediocre at Gwent, whenever I beat another human, it feels like a triumph. Beating a computer opponent is about as much fun as beating the computer at chess. I'll probably come back to the game in 2023, but it's definitely not high on my priority list. I returned to the game this year in hopes of beating it with the final character. I didn't succeed, but I did rekindle my desire to play deck builders. Given the small amount of time I typically have to play video games, I'm not sure if I'll play Slay instead of Monster Train, but I do have a desire to try and complete a run with each of the characters. After Dan, my brother, told me to reconsider the game, I gave it another chance. However, I was unable to figure out where to go next, and I gave up on the game. There are a few fun deaths for the viewers, though. Just as in the last couple of years, I've played Sonic racing games with the kids whenever they've asked. This year, I fought through a cavern to help some dwarves, and then I learned that a troll needed help getting his wife back. I barely made any forward progress on the story, but perhaps 2023 will fare better. I usually enjoy the game when I'm playing it, but I have too many long story-based games in my rotation. Once I finish these, I think I'm going to stick to just doing one at a time going forward. I only played once this year with the kids on their very developed farm. At this point, I don't know if I'll ever return to my farm instead of spending more time with story-based games or roguelikes. This game was incredibly beautiful, but not quite what I was looking for in a game this year. This tactic style game had a pretty interesting backstory and wool set. In the absence of a library of hundreds of games and other hobbies, I might have enjoyed the game. As it was, I decided to move on. Once again, I played TF2 during the Halloween event. 
at this point, it's more or less the right amount of Team Fortress for me. This is because nowadays, it's mostly TF2 diehards playing, and I don't play enough to not constantly die. I've been hearing lots about how awesome this game is, while also, somehow, avoiding all the spoilers. The small amount I played was incredible! This game has a sarcastic tone to it that I love, and I can't wait to get to it in 2023. I plan to limit the number of games I'm cycling through, so that I can get through these narrative games more quickly. This game came up on my rotation, and I tried to get past one of the bosses for once. I'm not sure if I'm going to force myself to finish before I play the sequel, but I'm also not in a rush to get the sequel since I have so many other games to play. The kids asked me to play moving out with them. We made a pretty good effort, but I think we're stuck with the furthest we can go to at the moment, based on our current skill levels. This was another request from the kids. I'm really not a fan of this game. At least, I'm not a fan when there are so few players. It is fun to have fun with the kids though. Once again, I tried to see if my Spelunky 2 skills would transfer back to Spelunky and allow me to further progress than I used to. But sadly, Spelunky remains too hard. When the kids were watching one of the prior year's wrap-ups, they saw Worms WMD and wanted to challenge me again. Occasionally, the kids would remember that Rocket League exists and ask me to play with them. I know I've said something like this for a few years now, but they do better and better each year as they get better at playing video games. Just as before, the kids wanted to play some worm games and asked for this one this time around.
Because I have so many games, thanks to Humble Bundle and Steam games, I have, nest I have nested lists that guide what I should play next. Most of my roguelikes and roguelikes are in that second list that I run through when not playing newer games. Vertical Drop Heroes HD came up next on the list, so I decided to run through it and see how far I got. I went pretty deep in the levels, but the best part was coming across a bunch of merchants that allow me to purchase new traits for the next time I play. I've wanted a racing wheel for years now, but I can never justify the price tag given how little I play racing games. However, around Black Friday, it was 30% off, and so I went ahead and bought it. I had an absolute blast playing Dirt 3 with a racing wheel. I definitely want to make more time to play it and other racing games in 2023. First, let's take a look at the runners-up. First up is Gwent. Gwent definitely belongs on the runners-up list. It's a game that I find myself addicted to every time I start playing it again. The monthly and weekly modes that they have keep the game fresh, and it's always fun to beat someone at the last minute. Interestingly, my next runner-up is Hitman Absolution. At first, I was just playing the game to finish it since I had started, but as I got more and more into the mechanics, I started getting more and more into it. Um, it definitely is pretty close to being Game of the Year, but not quite there. Moving on to Game of the Year. I think if I had spent more time playing it, Disco Elysium probably would have taken the top spot. And if it can continue performing at the way it does in the opening scenes, I think it will next year. However, once again, the top spot goes to a member of the Rogue family, Monster Train. It's really only the fact that I got to it later in the year that meant that Gwent surpassed it in hours played. It's a top contender for the first game I want to play in 2023 once I'm done with all these end of the year posts. The multi-dimensional um, aspect of the game and the ability to fight on different planes as well as the different clans and the different combinations that they afford make it an endless set of combinations for the game that makes it a ton of fun. Even once I beat it, I expect it to remain in my rotation for a long time and that makes it game of the year.